you know, this chapter is probably one of the most important chapters, I think, because we, we do a lot of cell manipulation. We want to look at our cells and do things with it. And so I kind of gave you a little prelude to this, which is your range command. And so we talked about range A1, and you can specify and put information in there. And then there's several ways to write the range command. So let's open up a file. If you want to, you can close off some of those other files and don't save them, of course. If you want to keep the code that you put in those, then just save them off as a different file name because we might use those files over and over again. So the file I'm looking for is called format. That's the file I'm looking for. So we're going to open that up. So I'll go file open. I've got my file called format. Format. Very similar to the quarters that we just did a minute ago, but this one is the one that has no information on it. It just gives me something to kind of shoot at a little bit. And I'll kind of zoom in a little bit so I can see a little bit better. I'm going to open up my Visual Basic Editor. I can come down to that module. Here's my format module. Now it looks like we don't have an actual module in this particular item, so we have to add one. So I'll go to Insert, Module, and now I have a new blank module. And it looks like my Object Explicit is working because it put that in there automatically, so it will do a little more error checking for me. Okay, so that's kind of where we are at this point. Now we're going to look at some of these commands to actually do these range commands and start looking at information on the screen. So the first one, we're going to create a code. We're just going to say sub. And I'll just call it test1, spell it right. I'm just going to hit the Enter key, and that will actually create my parentheses, my open and close brackets, and my end sub. So I created that, and I just kind of would insert my code in the middle of here. So if I want to go through and maybe format some of these things using a range command, the simple range command is range is the one we use the most put in the specific value in there, A1, and then say dot, and then you say what I want to do. So there's my object. Now I've got to put in my property. So you think, well, do I want to format the text? Do I want to format the background? Do I want to put something in that cell? You've got to think about what you want to do to that cell. Now in this case, we can type the word value, okay? And the value is going to be equal to, and we can actually put in some other information in there. So if I put in the word test Q1 result, just take test Q1. And we're going to put double quotes around that, of course. So that's going to actually run this code and actually put that value in that cell A1. So you can write a macro to go create a sheet for you and kind of build it out for you by just telling exactly where to go. So if I run that code, so I click there, and it says put that test Q1 in there, it actually replaces it with that value. Okay. So we can cut and paste this out. We can format it now. So we can format it using font or interior. So if I type in font, then you have to specify what kind of font you're looking for, dot, bold. So bold, oops. Now the bold is a little different. You can specify a true or false result and it will actually change it either bold or not bold. If you put in equals, you say double quote true. Oh actually you don't need to double quote. Just type true. Do it just like that. Now I'm going to run this. It may be wrong. If it's wrong I'm going to go look it up and figure out what it is. How do I look it up? You go to your reference. Remember my reference guide in the back. I can look for the word bold. As, as a command, and I can find that and reference it to the page. The bold is out there all over the place too, but you can see this works. Let me just see if this is going to work first. 
So I'll simply go to, and it may be already bold. Look at that. So, so maybe I'll make it italics. How's that sound? All right, P-A-L-I-C, italic. Now, I'm not sure if the word is italic. Is the actual command, I don't know if it's a italic or italics. So if I just do a control space bar, I-T, it's italic. So that's how you would check to see with the proper spelling of the command equals true. I'm going to run that, and you can see if it's going to turn italic or not. It's going to put the HQ in there. That's going to change it, and it put it italic. See? So you can go through and just write these range commands. Now, I could also go through and do this again. But this time, I'm going to actually do a range this time. A1 colon A7. So that does a range of cells, and it's going to make all of these italic, and they're all going to be true. So therefore, you can actually do a range this way. And this is the other option. So if I run that one, you can see that it will. Ready? And it runs it. So it does that range. All right, so let's go ahead out of this. And we'll jump back over book and show you some of the commands we could use. So here's your range with a single cell. Here's a range with a select range. So this goes from A2 to I2. You see there's a range there. You can also say the so word select and then say whatever selected, we're going to format it. The way we did it, we did it what's called a direct format. So we basically said, I don't care where you're at, just go out and format. Format these particular cells. And so you're going to go out and just push it out there and format it. This way here says, well, first you have to select it, and then you have to format it. So there could be reasons why you'd want to select something first. Then you want to format it after the fact. So say you're going to select several things, and you can actually select multiple things at that point, and then format them all at one time. Or you can format them all at the same time. So let's just try this style here in our code. And I'm going to open up this sheet, my code, and I will comment these out. So I want to keep it right in them. Comment in front of that, comment that. And again, it's really a good habit to get into to put comments in here if you're changing the code. Uh, so if you're making a change to the code, like right here, I'm changing this code to be something slightly different. I'm going to actually select it first, and then whatever's selected is what I'm going to format. So I could select this and save myself a little bit of typing here if I want. Okay, so here we can simply say range A1 to A7 dot select. That's going to select it first. And then we say whatever's selection dot, and we're going to do this. So in this case, we'll change the color. is equal to, and you can put in RGB, blue. You can change it to something like that. This is a two-line selection. So you might have a selection here. You might have some other selections. You might have some other things you're doing. But then whatever you've gathered, whatever you've selected, I want to format whatever's selected. And so that's just the other way to do it. And sometimes you have to do it this way in order to, depends on the operation you're doing. Most of the time, you can do it directly. What's nice about this is when you run the code, you can see it selected first before it actually formats it. If it doesn't format it properly, you, this question is, did it format the proper cells? you got to look at that. So, so if I'm going to run this. So there's my selection. I have selected them all, right? Now I can see that it's selected, and now I can watch my code a little better. When I run it, this next one should format to be blue, and it did. And remember, if I misspell the word blue, it should give me the error, B-L-E, it gives me my error. Okay, so it tells me that I spelled it wrong. This is the second way of doing it. 
a direct way or an indirect way. So I hope you're kind of playing around with this a little bit and getting familiar with this command structure so we can move on that. So this range selection is a little bit different and it's important to know all of these different styles because we have to use them for different purposes. So this is going to be your A2 to AI2 select and maybe we can do select some other stuff and we can change the color this way. So we're going to select it from with a comma in the middle instead of actually putting a colon between them. This shows another command, it's the cells command that simply says range cells 3, 2, which is row column, and then 2 row column, dot select. So you can use a cell of physical positioning on the Excel sheet to select or identify the, the range, and then you can choose the operation that you want to apply there. Let's try both of those. Let's try the style here, and then we'll try the cell style. Okay, so maybe we'll do this B here to I or something like that. So I'll just comment these out. Well, until you can copy them, and just copy them down and paste them. And that way you can keep the original, and then you can make the changes to it. So here we're going to go from A1, and then you put a double quote, comma, double quote, and that would be I1. Oh, excuse me. The I2. So we want to go from A2, which is the sales rep, all the way to the I2 across the top. We want to select those first. And then we're going to go through and run the command to change this top row blue. So we'll run this. There's my I2 to eight, A2 to I2. They're selected, as you can see. Now it's going to format to be blue. And format. Okay. The other method, we will do I, A3 this time. So we'll select these again. Let's copy them down. That way I have a, a reference to the original code. This is going to be the cell command. So we're going to simply say cell, forget if it's cell or cells. Let me see. Control space bar. It is cells, the word cell. It's not cell. Okay, so it's cells. Then you put in your rows column. So the rows I'll put in row four, column one. And then I'm going to say that's going to be two. Cells four comma and whatever it is out here from eight those so that's going to select all this information from this physical position which is right here to four row and eight out here somewhere. So this is the other way to identify the cell positions to format this stuff. Okay, let's try it, see if it works. Okay, so there's my selection. It did select it using that range method, the cell range method, and it formats it. So these are the basic building blocks of manipulating data on the screen. And so that's why it's really important to be able to get these down because we're going to be using these kind of throughout and we have to switch between these different methods depending on what we're trying to do. And it starts getting a little more complicated because we can search for things and we can put things at the bottom of a database, this kind of stuff. But we have to figure out where the bottom is. And we can use all these range selection techniques to identify those cells. And again, as you can see, I'm kind of going through the book step by step. So you can see that everything's sort of written in here. So you see the examples. And these examples are vital because sometimes if you just have like an S in the wrong spot, you know, like cell versus cells, then you might not know what the real command is. And this kind of shows you the right structure. See the cells right there, the cells there. So you might forget about cell or cells. You can look at the example 
you can't get it to work. If it gives you an error, then you can look at the example to kind of figure that out. So there's your range feature there, the sales option. Here's another one that is not that useful. I mean, I, it's useful, but I don't find it that popular, but I have seen it in code before. So several students have showed me some of the code that, that they're trying to modify. I've seen this out there before, so I put it in here just for that purpose, so that if you see it, it's something that you'll know what it is anyways. So you don't have to put in the range name at all. You just put a square back around it like this, dot select, and it will identify and select it that way. So there's another little option here. And here's the range name feature, which I don't want to get into too much, but this is if you use your range name capability you know, up here. You know, if you select something like this and you give this a range name, test this. So that's a range name. So if I select that range name, it says that. So maybe you have range names defined up here. And you want to use Visual Basic to identify those range areas and then make that change to that code and that kind of stuff. So a little bit more complicated, but more than we want to cover right now. But, but that is something that could be done. I've had people ask me about this before. And so that's why I included it in there. I think a little further down here, I put in, you see, here's a range name. This helps you define a range name. So you can define a range name in the code. So it's a little more complicated than just simply doing it. But I've had questions about these, and that's why I added these capabilities in here. So, so there's a couple of range name functionalities. Let's go through and do some little exercises. Kind of play with this a little bit. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to open up this file called conditional. And what I want to do is I want to format, it says format the data in each column using the four different range identification styles. So we're talking about this style here, these styles, all the different styles. Now, I put the answers down here. So I turned the answer upside down so that you, if you want to peek at it, you can. But if you want to try to get your hands on it and to try to really understand it without really looking at examples, then you can do that. So this is something you could peek at. I kind of gave you the answer in a way in case you really can't figure it out. I said be sure to use the IntelliSense feature here. I also say try using the RGB command. So this would be like font, dot font color equals RGB, and then you would put in the red, green, blue. So this here is going to be red because the first parameter is red, the second parameter is green, and the third parameter is blue. If you put 255, that means it's going to be a full intensity of red. If you put 255 here, that's going to be full intensity of green and the full intensity of blue. But if I put in 255, 0, 255, that's going to be red, high intensity, and then high intensity of blue, which will end up being kind of a purplish color, right? Now, if you want to have a lighter purple, then you can reduce the intensity on this side to 100 or something like that. You get less blue, it would be more purple. You can change these. So use try using this app when you do one of those commands. Just give you some other options to play around with. All right, so we'll open up this file called conditional. And I'll just sort of work through it with you. And hopefully you can do it on your own. I'll open and understand how these commands work. So we'll do it conditional here. Here's our conditional. So we're just going to go through and format these cells a certain way. We're just going to take each one and we're going to write some code, and we're just going to copy that code down and make a few changes to it, trying the different techniques out. All right, so I'm going to come over to my Visual Basic Editor, and I'm going to create a new module in my conditional sheet, insert module. And I'm going to put in my code, I'll call this format, format sheet, sub, format, uh, sheet, something like that. Hit the Enter key, and then you start sticking your code in here. Okay, so we're going to select cells B, B3 to B8. So I can type in range, B3 to B8. So again, the purpose of this is really to get your hands in it and to start seeing the structure of the code 
And so you can start familiarizing yourself with the objects and the properties. So it's kind of important to understand that. Now we're going to put another command here. Now if I do a control space bar, you can see what commands you can put in there. Now I don't know if you want to do a direct or indirect, but if you do a direct, then you can simply put in a font command in there. If you're going to do an indirect, you're going to put a select. So if I put in my font, font, dot, then you have to decide how you want to format. If you want to use a color, I can type in color, and I can say equals, and then I can use my RGB commands. RGB, control space bar, and you can choose some exotic style out here and try a few of these out to see what they are. There's a light cyan. Light yellow, here's a lime. Let's try lime. How about lime green? Oh, that's interesting. So I'll try lime green. Now I can copy this, save myself a little bit of time, and try to write the code and then run it to see if you can get it to work. So there's one style. The other style would be this double quote. Um, double quote like this. This is the other style. Okay, the other style. And we can change this one to let's try another interesting color. How about K H A K I? Whatever that is. <laughs> We're gonna see that one that one looks like. Okay. And then we can use the cells method. C E L L S. Well, this is not. This is wrong. This has got to be C. So there's my C here. Maybe the C eight. And this is going to be cells, which is going to be three in the rows and oh four. Over there, comma. This is going to be eight comma four, right? And that's going to change the font color of that one. So I'll change this color to. I'll do the RGB command. I'll say RGB. How about kind of a a bluish green? Okay. So zero and green is two fifty five, comma two fifty five. So that would be kind of a turquoise or a bluish green. If I want it to be more blue and less green, then I would change it from maybe to two fifty. That's going to reduce it down. Actually, I'll put this as two hundred, and that's going to be a lesser intensity of green and a higher intensity of blue. So that's how you would set the RGB commands up. Oops. What did I do wrong here? Oh, looks like I have another parenthesis right here. So I have to put an open and close on this around the range command. So those are the, the commands inside of that range there, which I kept to put that on there. And if you want to, you can try one of those other strange ones. It was this one here. I can put in a square bracket. Was it D3? Three, three colon D8. Eight, eight square bracket. And I can change that one. And this one too, some other color. Floral white. Fire brick. Dodge blue. Dodger blue. Let's do Dodger blue. So there's a few of my commands out there, and I got this style here. And I'm going to run it. See if it's going to do anything. If it get, turns black, sometimes it's because it didn't recognize the name. But I'm going to 
run it, see what it does. There's my lime color, looks like lime. Here's this weird color, kind of a goldish color. Here's this one here, the cells method. That was that Dodger blue. No, it wasn't Dodger. This is Dodger blue. I did the wrong one, so I did it plus. So I should have gone this one from E E8 to E8 here. All right, so let me run it again. There's that one. Now it's going to do that Dodger blue. And there's the Dodger blue. Okay. So again, you can go through and format your sheet using manually creating these, these commands. Those are the basic selection techniques that I wanted to touch on. Did you guys do okay on that? Did you, did you were able to type in the code and get it going or? Yeah, I was able to do that. I have a question though with, um, what is it? The range of three, four, you can't use letters, huh? You have to count it. Yeah, you have to count it. You That's what's like for. Three E. You no, can't do that, right? Yeah. No, you can't okay. do that. But you can actually write a command that says, wherever the cursor is, I want to identify that row or column. And you can do that, and you can apply that into one of these cells commands. So instead of putting a number, a physical number in there, you can say, well, wherever the cursor is, that's where I want to start. Like a relative mm -hmm. type. Of thing. And then you can extract that row or column from that as a command. So. I think it's called rows or columns. I'll just search for it here. Browse, browse, browse. There it goes in column right there, see? Yeah. The command I'm looking for is down here, which is the active cell row. So I can actually say identify the active cell, the active row or the active column. And then I can pull that out. See, so this I'll put this message box out there. So you can use that right, right in the cells command here. See it? So let me just do it here so you can see what I'm referring to. So, so it says I'm currently on the fifth row. See where my cursor is? So it tells me I'm on the fifth row. See, so I could actually, instead of doing it that way, I can simply say, if I put my cursor here, for example, I want to go from that row, from this row down from here down, not from the top down, from there down. So I can come into this and simply say, active cell row is going to be right here. Yes. So I'm going to go to the sixth column, but I want to go from wherever the cursor is down to the bottom of that. And this is going to be six here too. So I can use these commands to extract information from the worksheet to identify where I want to start it from. Maybe you want to do something of that nature. So let me just run that and show you that it actually does work. So there's that one. Now it's going to go out to the active cell row, wherever that is, and that happens to be on five. I see it formats from that point down. That's why that command is useful. Because sometimes you're looking at it from a physical position and you want to extract that way. See? So I see. That would be the one of the uses for it, is to extract it mm -hmm. on that. That's kind of the idea. So I'll stop.